a closer look at John Isner, as I mentioned, 36 years of age now. He's 6 feet 10, 208 centimetres. His current ranking is 24. And of course, he's been as high as number eight. That was in July of 2018. He achieved that. 16 career titles for John. And, uh, Wimbledon semi-finalist, 2018. Lost to uh, Anderson in a marathon. And of course, we will all recall his match against Nicholas Mahu, Wimbledon 2010. That extraordinary fifth set, 70-68. Uh, which he got through and one of the best servers in the game as we've mentioned as you'd imagine when you're six foot ten it's uh, a little easier to get some genuine angles as well as of course uh, clearance over the net so very much the strength of john's game and uh, has been so right from the moment that he came onto the scene all those years ago His opponent, Braden Schnoor from uh, Toronto, has played uh, primarily challenges. His record to this point is a little modest. He's aged 26. He's a tall man also, six foot four, 193 centimeters. Current ranking of 238, been as high as 92. That was in August of 2019. His best result in 2019 as a qualifier, he uh, got to the final of the tournament at New York, defeating Steve Johnson along the way and uh, losing to Opelka in the final. Let's hope he makes a good count of himself here today. Went to the University of uh, Northern Carolina, where he was a three-time All-American, did uh, Braden Schnur. So that will stand him in, in good stead. And Mark, when you've, uh, you've played at that, in that environment, it's very passionate. So that's sort of an entree into uh, the professional level, all that, uh, that goes with the expectations and stepping up, uh, I guess, representing your, your college, but now representing your country. It's, uh, it's sort of been a step up of uh, gradual proportions for Braden. Yeah, everyone has their different paths and, and, the, and the great thing about the college tennis is, you know, there's a lot of matches. These guys are playing a lot of singles, a lot of doubles. Um, like you said, the intensity is there. Um, but look, he's gonna have some nerves this morning. Obviously today out there representing his country uh, up against a player like, like Isner. But just like any any player, he's got to focus on his serve. You know, try and calm down. The biggest thing is just to hold on to your serve and and uh, you know just try and get some balls back on the return of serve and and um, you know loosen up. One minute. So Braden Schnell there, eyes on the ball, and uh, he'll need to be really focused and reacting well to deal with this man's service prowess. Over 13,000 aces has been served by that man. Isn't it? That's a lot of free points. It's a beautiful action, very fluent. Any keys for you, Mark, as to, to how to address the problem of dealing Ladies with the Isner serve? Do you try and get some information Isner as to where he likes to serve on big points? Do you try and stand receive. back a little bit? What, what would your decision be? Well, look, I, I've, I've never uh, played John or re I've returned his serve, but back in the day, you know, it was Goran Vinicevic, it was Krychek, the guys, the biggest servers Isner in the world. When you're serving, when you're playing against someone with such a big weapon, when they're hitting their lines and they're serving that big, there's, there's really nothing you can do. But what I'd like to try and do is, is just change of where I was standing in the position on my returns, getting the the other your, your opponent just to think a little bit, you know, just to see you change in different directions. But when they've got rhythm and they, they, you're literally walking side to side and looking at aces go by, you want to try and do something to get your opponent off, off their rhythm. And I think a good way is just changing where you're standing. Get a little bit closer, sometimes a little bit longer, sometimes a, a foot and a half on the right-hand side, a foot and a half on the left-hand side, something that might get them to 
get off the rhythm. But but if Johnny's on and he's serving the way he's serving with that weapon of his, it's, it's, there's nothing really you can do. You've got to guess sometimes. Great perspectives there from Mark Philippoussis, who knows exactly what he's talking about. Fantastic insights. Thank you, Mark. Looking forward to this. Isna, well, he does what he does. Big serve, likes to step around, hit the big forehand. Yeah, Braden Schnur certainly got the job ahead of him. He's got nothing to lose. He needs to come out here with a nice positive attitude, enjoy the experience. John Isner, and, uh, team it's a two-horse race. Anything can happen. So John Isner from the USA getting us going. will give him some confidence. Lofferty. Not a bad way to sail himself into a match. Good moving for a big guy. Nice shape on the ball, hitting around the outside of it, curling it in. Perfect. That's just one of the beautiful things to watch. That second serve kicked right up in the shoulders. By the time he got that back, John being six foot ten took four steps and was already inside the service line to hit that volley. <laughs> yeah. He's made it. On the line, I think. 15-30. Couple of ripping passing shots, so the door's slightly ajar. If you can get an early break for Team Canada, it'll be uh, delightful for Schnur. The other thing is it's too easy to forget is, is John's his first it's first match of the year, so he's going to have some nerves too. He's also representing his country, and that's also no matter how many times you do that, it's it's you're always going to be a little nervous. Forty thirty. Terrific angle on that serve, just with the height, he's able to achieve those angles without necessarily having to swing the ball. Nice soft hands from the big guy. Challenged, but was up to the task. Opening game, USA. So as ever, Isner, when threatened marginally, 15.30, comes up with some big serves. Serving and volleying a lot. Interesting signs. First game of the match. Mark Pecci is courtside. We'll have a chat to Mark soon. He's... Uh, Right perspective from that position as to the speed of the court and exactly what's happening. So, Mark, what is the speed of the court and uh, what's your uh, perspective from court side? Yeah, it's interesting as you guys were saying about John Servan and Volling here. I mean, it does look a little bit quicker than the 
court speed in terms of the Ken Rosewall Arena. And certainly, obviously, this is predominantly an indoor site, so clearly the ball's going to get through the court a little bit quicker, and it's certainly going to be interesting to see if John continues to serve and volley quite as much. It's kind of a weird feeling, really, obviously, in the Aussie summer that you're playing in an entirely indoor arena, but I guess it was a little bit like that over in Long Perth in Western way. Australia when we were there for Hotman Cup in the past. Yep, spot on. Beautiful arena it is, too. Under a lot of pressure there, sure, Love 30, isn't it coming forward? He had to come up with something of quality to Schnorr, and he does so. Yeah, that was a great, great passing shot. Like you said, Love 30, a lot of pressure. Having someone of his size coming into the net to cover the net is uh, quite intimidating. Well, the approach shot there from Braden Schnorr, not quite good enough, and Isner, nice dipping backhand, gives himself a couple of early breakpoint opportunities. Thirty forty. John has some big take backs on, on his uh, ground strokes, especially that forehand. We'll see some unforced errors, but obviously a lot of winners too. Oh, that's a disappointing miss there from so, so Isna taking advantage of uh, a little tension, perhaps, in the racket arm of Braden Schnorr. Early break, two love. I think one of the aspects of Isna's serve, Mark, that we've not spoken a lot about is, is the quality of his second serve as well. He very rarely double faults. He has great speed and direction. Not just all about his first serve. No, John, I, I think has the best sec best second serve in the game. Yes, he's got the, one of the biggest and best serves in the game, but he's also got the best second serve in the game. That spin he can get off it with just with that flick of the wrist, he can go either side, forehand or the backhand. A little soul destroying for Schnur has not done a lot wrong. He's facing a double break here though. That's uh, the most effective serve against a tall player, always into the body. Tough to get out of the way when you're that tall. Just overpressing, such as the pressure United that's being applied by Isner. So double break it is now for the tall United American 5-1. I must say, one of the things I really love about John's serve 
that he makes it look so effortless is, is the ball toss. You know, I think it's the most important thing on the serve, and his ball toss is so consistent and simple. They flip it barely leaves his hand, does it? I mean, you've got no time as the returner to see it. I mean, the distance it travels from the time that it leaves his palm to the time that he hits it is a fraction of a second. It's such a short distance, as you say. I mean, nothing can go wrong. Absolutely, just beautifully guided up exactly where he needs to be. Well, it's very impressive. Braden has been handling the first serve better than the second serve. Well, if you look at the, the points, it's 21 points to 16, which is, you know, not indicative of the score of 5-1. He's, he's been getting into so many games, Schnorr. He just hasn't been quite able to, to close the deal. Third service game that Eason has been behind the count at 15.30. Previous two, he's had no problems dealing with it. And, uh, looking to do likewise here. line calling in play no uh, officials on court did all the hard work there Schnorr had the the forehand 14 that was very makeable unfortunately for him finds the tape so set point now for team USA Coming in anyhow, and Isner's had a lunge at it. Stood way back on that return of serve. Mark Petchy would have enjoyed that. Good Johnny. Good John. Good yeah, I look, I look like I was right when you hit a shot like that afterwards, but I think uh, for all intents and purposes, what Mark Philippoussis was saying about a couple of steps in and John having a decent look at the volley was probably more pertinent, to be fair. I mean, there's nothing you can do about that shot. He was probably close to two metres outside of the tram line and that thing was still moving away from him. And he guessed as well. Set point again. And finds the line with his third ace. Very impressive opening set for Team USA. Isner on fire, takes it 6-1 in 28 minutes. Very impressive indeed, Mark Philippoussis. And, uh, I think the stats will show that every facet of business game pretty much on song what do you think mark yeah i mean 62 percent of first serves for john 50 second no double faults which is huge 12 win this time you three on four stereos is a very solid set from john um you know the scoreboard kind of not always telling the story, right? Braden was in so many of those service games and it was actually quite impressive on the return of serve. I think three 
out of the four service games he had 15 30 and then the fourth one he had 30 all which is not easy to do on John's serve so um, hopefully he can think about that and then take some positives away but more importantly he's got to hold on to serve at least to start off this second set and um, that's the biggest thing is just try and stay ahead and try and do something on, the, on, the, on that second serve Good change up of the second serve. Excellent effort from Schnorr. He's not going anywhere. 2 1, second set. Six-year-old Braden Schnorr relying his uh, world ranking of 238, as I mentioned at the outset. He's been as high as 92 into a tour final, but uh, displaying some genuine quality here. Lost the first set comfortably, but on serve in the second. Fantastic return off that second serve. Oh, that was not a bad serve into the body. Got out of it nicely. Using the pace. Blocking it back deep. I know there's nothing you can do, but uh, uh, I think he's going to try and just change his positioning, especially out wide. He's getting burnt so many times that wide serve. Maybe just invite him down the middle, even though he's got that huge one down the middle. At least cut his favourite serve off a little bit. Aces mounting for Isner, seven for the match. Getting racket on ball, he's returning exceptionally well, Schnur. He needs to get racket on ball. Uh, 
that's just too good. Again, within a couple of feet of the line with pace. And uh, it's an unreadable delivery. So as a receiver, you've uh, really got the greatest of challenges dealing with that delivery. Captain Michael Russell, we saw there moments ago, just encouraging from the team zone. It's a great return from John. Stepping in, but that time not, it didn't take as, as, as big of a swing. I think just turned his shoulders. Using the pace of the serve, a bit of a block, plenty, plenty of power. Both team zones becoming quite vocal, giving support to their respective players. All part of uh, one of the initiatives of the ATP Cup. That we quote shot not good enough, not deep enough, not with enough pace. And Isna easily picks it off. 15 40. And gives himself a couple of break point opportunities, does the big American. Body serve doing the job. Will he go there again? Still one break point to negotiate. is why I couldn't quite get enough purchase on either the ground stroke or the volley. So the break going the way of Team USA. 3-2. first shot or the second giving his the time to set himself just an awkward height and just snatching at the volley and the pressure constantly being brought from the big American finally paying dividends looking the goods at the moment this finishing line is in sight Great reaction from John, obviously showing how much this means to him. Trying to get Team USA off to a great start. Yeah. 
One of the shots, I think, Flip as well, and Jeff, that, that's so important against somebody like John on a call like this is a slice backhand. And, you know, we often talk in sport about mental toughness and, uh, you know, all those kind of other things. But for me, one of the most important things is always to come out against these great players with a full toolbox. And if you watch Brandon play, I mean, he, you know, on that approach shot, Jeff, that you described that wasn't good enough, again, you kind of feel like get that ball down low to John at six foot ten. It's tough for him to get the ball that up and down quickly. And, you know, slice backhand is one of the biggest shots that I think a lot of these players these days don't have. Absolutely. Well, there was one good slice backhand there in particular, the second last Lovely. ground stroke of Schnur. This one here hesitates, but that's what set up the point for him. So perhaps he's got it, just hasn't used it frequently enough. That was difficult, and he made it look quite straightforward. Fantastic point. That was a great return and an unbelievable pickup from John. And Braden did doing really well to move up to this one. A little flick of the wrist to get under that one. Well done. Great point. Dennis Shapovalov enjoying that. So love 30. Again, he's making some headway in the Isner serve. Okay, he missed that one, but he moved out. He, you know, he, he 15, yeah. made a decision to move out for the wide one, and he picked it, but just uh, missed it. It was good to see, though. Classic example of a, a kind of point that I know Jim Curry doesn't Thank always you. love to see John Isner's overly use the serve and volley because if he's coming in here, he's actually got a volley underneath the height of the net. It's going to be a little bit tricky. He's actually defending, whereas if he just lets the ball bounce at times, he gets some pretty easy pickings with shots like that. That makes sense. Handle that one nicely. Big swipe at that second serve. John's got a big second serve. Had a little bit of too much adrenaline in that shot. He's been seeing the serve well, but that time just swinging way too big. Game. Ace number nine from the racket of Isner. The, the man keeps snuffing out in these stressful situations, doing it. Quite beautifully set and four two. Yeah, I'd love to know what Schneider's kind of thought process was on that 30 all point, really. That was the opportunity. That was probably his last sort of route back into this match there. And as Flip said, he's just taken an absolutely huge swing at it. You kind of want to block it into John's backhand and and, and try and turn the odds around in your favour. Thirty. 
big difference between the two benches out here at the moment as well. Not a mobile phone to be seen on the American side. A couple in the hands of the Canadians as well. Better energy and better intensity, I kind of feel, from the player zone from Team America or Team USA. Sights from Mark Petchy courtside. Beautiful. Great Sam. Just perhaps getting off the service line, hurrying Isna. Third double fault. Percentages throughout his career, 65. He's right on that at the moment. Gets the job done. Still down a break, but his attitude remains competitive. Down a break. 4-3. Kudos Bank Arena here out at Olympic Stadium, but uh, so much to see all over Sydney. Of course, the harbour renowned all around the world, the Harbour Bridge there, very much the focal point of the recent New Year's Eve celebrations, the Opera House, and there's so much joy out on this magnificent harbour. The Sydney to Hobart yacht race recently came out of uh, the harbour itself. If you're ever into Sydney, it's a, a must-see location. Jump on a ferry, take trips to so many locations. And uh, one of the big cruise ships there docked as well. What a spectacle. The scoreboard looks uh, quite straightforward as far as the US is concerned. 6-1-4-3 with a break. Canada has been fighting manfully. By Raiden Schnur, his ranking of uh, over 200 at the moment, belying his, uh, his skill level, 238, being as high as number 92. But he's uh, he's made Isna focus and uh, bring his A game. effort to get that return back. I thought that was a winner. Fantastic first point. Great recovery steps as well there from the big man, wasn't it? He's been doing his ballet. In Canada, requesting the replay of the call on the left centre service line. Well, there's a challenge here, but uh, it's just going to confirm fact that it was six millimeters in. Game 
Well, winning 84% of points when the first serve goes in in this set. And it's making life very difficult for Braden Schnorr. Almost an hour and a half of tennis. It's been good quality. School line of 6153. Perhaps not at all indicative of the quality we've seen from the Canadian. Not dead yet, if he can hold serve here. Fifteen left. See, that was the one I think we've been talking about. Great return of serve. Got himself in good position for that forehand, but kind of just rolled it. Even if that went in, nothing would have happened. He got a huge opportunity to hit big off there with that, with that cross court, but just chose to roll it in and, and missed it. There you go. You know, he's up 6-1-5-3. He's got nothing to lose in this service game. He's serving for the match. The next one, if he does lose this, but just let it go a little bit. Open up those shoulders. Choice from Schnorr there to go down the line. He was out of position, paid the price, and with 30, it, 40. he's now going to have to negotiate a match point. Kind of rally where I was just sort of saying, I feel as though that's where you want to see a couple of slice backhands introduced. He kind of you know, by hitting it as high as he does, he doesn't make the net an obstacle at all for John. He can just see over the top of it, rip those big groundies for the winner. Brilliant from Isner. Absolutely brilliant. He was on fire in this match. Gets the job done in straight sets against a very game. Raiden Schnorr, 6-1, 6-3. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, that was an impressive match from John. I think there's a, a lot to take away, Mark, for uh, Braden Schnorr, if he sits and has a look at the tape and gets some information, because uh, these basics look pretty good. No, look, he, I was very impressed the way he handled John serve. I mean, a lot of the time he got to 30 all and even had 15, 30 in a bunch of service games and, and a break point. I mean, he played really well. Unfortunately, just, um, you know, just doesn't have that weapon on, on his serve. You know, doesn't have that serve to get some free points to try and get the pressure off himself. He's always, there's always pressure during the whole match. Um, but he should be pleased um, with the way he played. He had some, uh, you know, played some great points today, but John was just, too, too good, too strong. Very sharp indeed. We've got an opportunity uh, in a moment to hear from John Isner, getting a little uh, liquid into him. Here he is. He's with Mark Pecci. John, Happy New Year. Congratulations. Great start, obviously, for Team USA and a great start for you. Hit the ball terrifically well. I, I did. I, I, um, I surprised myself um, how well I played out here. 
Uh, you know, you you're always to pat yourself on the back. It's okay. No, but you know, you're always. Uh, you, know, you work hard in the off season, but you never really know what can happen in the first match of the year. But I actually really like this court. It's not too fast, which I prefer. Gives me a little time to swing out on my shots, being so big. That that helps me out a lot. But uh, certainly, Patch, as you said, we're. Um, we're off to a good start, and hopefully we can keep this going. It's a good time to be part of uh, U.S. men's tennis at the moment. Twelve players in the world's top 100, the most of any nation. You must be delighted to still be at the ripe old age of 36, number two in your country. No, no, for sure. It's, uh, things are looking up for, for American men's tennis. Obviously, the, the women on, on the American side have been t great for the last 10 years. We've sort of lagged behind, but me as the elder statesman of the group, I think it's good for me to have all these um, players, I guess, ranked just behind me. Uh, gives me a lot more motivation to, uh, to try to keep up with them. John, 36 years of age, came out of college. Obviously, would you have expected at that stage that you would still be here inside the world's top 25, still looking as fit, as motivated as you are for this game? No, I, absolutely no way. I, I never thought I could make money playing tennis when I left college, but uh, I get to play this sport for a living, and it's in, I'm incredibly lucky, incredibly blessed, and I get to come down to this amazing country. This is probably my 15th or 16th time down here, and uh, I'm so lucky, and I, I cherish it because there's going to be a time, maybe pretty soon, where I'm not playing, playing anymore, so uh, these are good times. And congratulations, of course, in order off the court. Of course, you welcomed your third child. Yeah. You got two boys, a daughter yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Three kids under four, you must be enjoying the yeah. sleep down here. So I have a, a, a three-year-old, a two-year-old, and a three-month-old. So sleep is um, a, a precious commodity at our house, and I have been crashing so hard here at the hotel. I've been waking up, have no clue where I am, because I don't get up at three in the morning to you know, comfort my kids when they have a nightmare. So it's, um, but you, know, you wouldn't change it for anything, obviously. I miss, uh, I miss them so badly, and I miss being home. But, my amazing uh, wife, Maddie, has everything under control. She's, uh, she's the best. And you had everything under control on the call today. Congratulations. Thanks, Gentle giant, isn't he? John Isner always handles himself so well on and off the court, and his performance on court today was uh, something to be admired, and uh, he seems like he's uh, keeping on keeping on. Mark, no signs of retirement in uh, his future, it seems. No, no as long as he's healthy um, and enjoying it there's no reason to he's got uh, a bunch of years left in him hopefully and um, you know it's great to see him on the court and it's great to see him start off the year so positively so, some foot issues just uh, the last 12 or 18 months they seem to have uh, disappeared now which is great and of course with that serve that he possesses he's always in any match I mean, it's just one of the one of the beautiful things to watch, just a smooth, easy delivery as we uh, have a look at the summary here, Mark. What do you make of it? First serves, uh, yeah, first serves 70%, 42nd look, 29 winners. I mean, he's big, right? He's six foot four, so he's he's got size. He can hit the ball down into the court nicely, and he's he's sturdy. In my mind, I don't have him in, in that category of the dominant servers, but he, in fact, is when he makes a first serve. He'll be very happy with that type of rally, Taylor Fritz. One of the unusual stats from his lovely run through to the last four of Indian Wells, of course, was that he actually ended up hitting more backhands than forehands in that particular run through in that tournament. Not trying to run round, make marginal gains to get his forehand into play. Happy to be far more central on the court. And that's a good trade for him out here. has been the Achilles heel. He's at 50% of points won on his second serve in his career so far, Felix. That's a number that's going to have to improve for him. That is a bullet of a forehand from Taylor Fritz. It is still going to be the shot that pierces the defences of his opponents, the forehand, even if he's happy to be consistent off the two-hander. That is an awesome swing. It's 
Some early chances for Team USA in the second singles. High quality backhand from Felix. And that's a test early on. Yeah, it's a risky shot, taking it really inside out from that position, challenging the line and got a great benefit from it. Perfectly placed. And the overhead finishes it off. Oh, this is good entertainment early on. Yes. There is Frederick Fontaine, still living in uh, Beirut, down there in the southwest of France. Yeah, he's been coaching Felix for quite some time now. And serving as the de facto captain for this match, he'll be sitting front and center having a chat with his player on the change of ends. Thank you. You want good tussles, and this is certainly a long, hard one for OJ Aliassime in his opening service game. Welcome to 2022. Played 774 service games last year, they weren't all five minutes long. Turner serve has been a big part of his improvement on break points actually converted. I know he hasn't been able to take the two chances that he's had in this game, but he went from 15% in terms of uh, break points one to 21% in terms of uh, in 2021. you can do about that. Another terrific ter delivery. save for Team Canada. Get on the board. I had to grind to do it. Both of these players come from uh, a pretty rich tennis history in their families. Felix's father, longtime tennis coach, and Taylor's parents, both professional players. In fact, his mom, Kathy May, was a top 10 player. Terrific. So both uh, understandably pretty sound technically.
pair. Three players Definitely in that 20 to 21 year old age group. Nakashima is at 20 years of age. He's ranked 68 in the world. One of the better backhands we've seen in American tennis in quite some time. And Jensen Brooksby, a 21 year old who took a set off of Novak Djokovic at last year's US Open. He's uh, at 56 in the world. And then Sebastian Korda, son of the Australian Open champion Peter, just turned 21. He's already inside the top 50. So those three players putting pressure on Taylor Fritz and Francis Tiafo and Tommy Paul and Riley Opelka, the 24-year-old pack. And frankly, it's elevated everyone. Everyone has sort of gotten Four their down. bell rung, that 24-year-old group, and said, hold on a second. We're not ready to cede the spotlight to another group of young Americans. We're still the young Americans. So it's been, I think, a, a healthy rivalry between the generations. Wasn't there another American heyday when that was the case? Don't recall. <laughs> have to blow irons, the sharpening irons. I have to blow the dust off. Didn't they write that song about you, Jim, young American? I don't think so, Fitz. But no? I, I was reading about uh, our friend Wally Masur, who uh, is in charge of uh, tennis for TA, I guess, on the, on the competitive side. And he's talking about how the goal there is to get 10 Australians in the top 100. I think it currently sits at seven, something like six or seven. What do you think about that, Fitz? It doesn't leave a lot of room for the rest of the world. 90 spots only. That's a big goal. Seems feasible, though. You've got some good players just outside the top 100 who could certainly get in there. Top 100 for Australia at the moment. Six in the gap from 100 to 200 as mm -hmm. well. So definitely feasible. And they're all kind of mid-20s as well, which in the current sort of generation that we have is kind of peak prime time. Bolt, Vukic, Kokonak, it's good to see him back and good to hear him talking that he's had a very healthy preseason as well. Let's hope that... Can put the tennis on the court that we know he's capable of. Coleman's Purcell and Christopher O'Connell. The others is OJ Aliassime levels things up for a piece. What do you reckon, Fitzy? You had a career Grand Slam in doubles. How many singles Grand Slams with one of these guys' first serves would you have had? <laughs> well, I would have had a bigger house I think <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about anything else but uh, no they can can't get a bigger house than that Fitzy come on Tots is in the, your shadow every day drives him mad <laughs> he's a smaller guy <laughs> you know I, I speaking in all seriousness now Petra I do love it when when $15. Taylor Fritz comes forward and and if that's what Paul Anacone uh, is teaching him that's that's going to give him another dimension because he, he's taken the ball out of the air quite a few times now in the last three or four games. A lot of the time with that big roundhouse forehand swinging volley, but but that one as well. And that I think him coming forward presents a whole different perspective to the opposition, you know, and, and puts doubt in the mind of the opposition. You don't have to come in all the time, but but to be a multi-dimensional player, I think he's got to be able to do that more. And uh, he, for me, he's more scary if he starts to do that. Interesting, I was looking at OJ Aliassime's return position since we'd started working with uh, Uncle Tony. You would have thought, with the way that Rafa returns, that he actually would have gone further back 
on his second serve in particular, but actually he's gone closer. Well, the one thing he has done a little bit more under Tony is, is mix his return position up a little bit more. Go back. When he does go back, he goes very deep, but he's actually crept a little bit closer to the baseline on average. 14, 15. Yeah, he's done that too often today. Try and run around that backhand. It was uh, only a matter of time before Taylor snapped one down the tee. Gorgeous 100, serve. 179 kilometers an hour. That's a quality serve in general, and that was breaking away from the Canadian. Felix going to stand back deep again on the, the second serve. And again, the wide went into the forehand, gets the job done. Yeah, wait on the left leg. He couldn't get himself back quickly enough. He was trying to cheat round it. Taylor's keeping him honest. 5-4. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Even that one he got around with a forehand, like, I can't really miss that. Like, it's... No, no, no. I'm trying to just make sure you get down. It's going to slide. I'm going to try to be a little more solid in this game. A little more. Yeah, I know, so I'm going to make him play a little Talking about uh, the scoreboard, Taylor Fritz wants to force Felix to come up with some shots, talking about being more solid, right? which is a direct translation of fewer unforced errors. Slightly less aggression, and that's uh, that's good general awareness. See if the tension in the moment gets to uh, his opponent. Still no breaks of serve in this uh, second match of this tie. Team America with the opening win is John Isner taking on taking on Britton Schnur, taking him out in two sets. Dennis Shapovalov, a late scratch. Remember, he was part of that exhibition in Abu Dhabi that felled about five of the eight players uh, contracting, and coaches. Con contracting COVID afterwards. So he's he's here, Shapovalov, but still trying to recover from the illness, so not quite able to make it to the starting line. Team America has also been affected. Austin Krychek, the doubles player, was meant to be on the team. He tested positive before the travel. And Rajiv Ram, the number four ranked doubles player in the world, tested positive here and will be sidelined until next Thursday. Left. Rajiv watching uh, from the hotel. Hey, Raj, hope you're feeling well. And looking forward to seeing you back on court here next week. Now, you might be wondering at home what type of impact does COVID have on these world-class athletes with incredible VO2 max capacity. We know COVID can affect people's lungs. So far, have not heard too many problems from the players who have had the virus and come back to tour. Hopefully that will remain the case. And everything that we're reading about the new strain, Omicron, is that it's uh, less taxing on people's lungs in general, which is good news amongst all the bad news. Built to a beautiful crescendo, didn't it? That rally again, going OJ Eliasim's way. One shot that I don't see a lot of from Taylor on the defense or even to introduce it to break up the rhythm of his opponent, slice back and Jim. Yeah, it's, it's definitely an area of opportunity for him to add that into his arsenal. You can neutralize a, a good shot into your backhand if you can keep it low with a slice, much tougher to attack off of a low ball, of course. 
It also buys someone like Taylor more time to get back into position because the slice typically travels slower than a topspin backhand. So. Interesting how short his serves down the tee were actually on the juice side, wasn't it? He's actually got more margin to build into the trajectory over the net on the serve down the juice, isn't he? I mean, they were literally halfway up the box from Felix. I think with information like that where you see where players prefer to serve doesn't mean it's always going to work out for you, but there, there is something to taking away their favorite shot. And you can do that by just standing a little more in that direction and making the dimensions of the court look a little different for them, giving them more space to work with in their uncomfortable serve. You might get more missed first serves as a result. Game. Five break points between the two players. Four for Team America, four for Team, uh, one for Team Canada in the opening set. No breaks to serve, however, but something's got to give as we approach the one hour mark. Yep, the tie break, the tip of the iceberg, isn't it? More pressure on Team Canada having lost that opening singles match. No margin for error for Roger Aliassime in this one. One zero. Team United States. I always get the sense with Felix Roger Aliassime at times on the return that he's still a little uncertain about what his best method of returning the serve is in some of these big moments. And he still had just such a phenomenal career for somebody so young, top tenner, 21 years of age. And yet you still sense the, the upside on his return game is still so significant. Still questions at times, should he be up near the baseline? Two, zero. Team United States. almost feel as though that miss is a little bit of a hangover from the disappointment of missing the return on the first point of this tiebreaker. Two, one. Team United States. Dangerous shot from Fritz, giving up so much court Three, to run around one. and get the forehand. But a real let off from uh, Felix Oje Aliasim had open court to work to and just pulled up on the shot, not able to center it on the strings. And he's looking up at the scoreboard down a mini break. That is massive, 218K. Yeah, and it's subtle pace as well, isn't it? I mean, it's ferocious, but it's subtle. It, you suddenly, you have to actually just take your eyes to the speed gun because it doesn't look that different to some of the other serves that he's putting down. He's also not a loud tennis player. He doesn't grunt 
there's not a lot of verbiage coming out there, so it, it can be it can seem like it's uh, not a lot of effort, but he's got a live arm, as you said. He's got a good lead right now, too. Oh, no. no, no, no. So good, Matt. Five, one. Bad choice of shot, poorly Team executed. Not a good combination from OJ Aliassime there. You hit that inside out, you hit it short. I mean, Taylor's back in the team zone trying to hit that. You, you know, Petch, I think on the money, and for me with, with Felix, th this is where he his biggest potential of improvement is. I mean, that's just a shocking decision for, for a player of his level. And once he understands and someone teaches him the angles of the court a bit better, he, he could do anything for me because he's the, the athleticism, the, the hitting ability, it's all there. But that, that's just poor structure. And, and that's not knowing which is the right shot to hit at that right time for me. Five one, Team USA, opening set tiebreak. Five two, Team United States. Six, two. Team United States. Another beautiful delivery. Subtly destructive from Taylor Fritz. Four set with points. Three. Gotta say that was probably unnecessary Team given United its dominance States. in this tiebreaker to just give a little bit of an opportunity and hope back to OJ Aliassime. First double fault of the, the match for the American. Odd time to go for a second serve ace. I agree. Uh, the cushion is there. The pressure still remains on this young man's shoulders. That's a better choice. Six, four, Team United States. Well, the, one of the mistakes he made when he hit the, the forehand down the line and lost his, his service point was that he didn't go big on it either. He, he went to the wrong spot and then hit it softly. You have to commit to us a, a ball that's sitting up that much. The point's ending. It's going to end. You have to be decisive about that. He was that time. And here he is, still in the set. And that second serve uh, choice from Fritz is going to feel a little bit, uh, it's going to cause some anxiety if he's not able to get this point. time what an arm wrestle of a rally that was on set point Six, five. 
held his nerve. Good OJ Aliasimi was under assault by that forehand, but he turned it around with his own forehand down the line, and then that was decisive. That was the type of forehand that will build lots of houses around the world. Well, he's still down set point, and it's Team America to serve for it. What about this second serve? You expect this one probably to be fairly conservative. Oh, boy. Tyler getting in a tangle. Six on. And OJ Aliasim still resides in this opening set. Say so four set points. Team Canada down already a match. John Isner rolling back the ears earlier today. Taylor Fritz somewhat unraveling. Sequence of points this has proven to be for Team Canada. Seven and six. Team Canada. A tremendous amount of commitment from Felix Oje Aliasim in these rallies to be aggressive when he can be. And he gets Fritz on the defensive and extracts a very valuable error. And just like that, it's now set point for Team Canada. to us but it was unknown how they were going to match up against each other it's been phenomenal not if you're Taylor Fritz though but for the neutrals and for Team Canada it has been excellent what a turnaround for Team Canada they take the opener 7-6 Time not just for Felix to get his breath, but for everybody else as well in the Kudos Stadium as we see the credits from the opening set. And well, it was always going to be nip and tuck, but it was a set that again just goes to show just how good it was in terms of winners to unforced errors. Not too often you get to see those kind of numbers, more winners than unforced errors by both players in a set in these types of conditions, and it just underlines a high-quality contest that we've just seen. It's going to be a tricky one now for Taylor Fritz to navigate his disappointment, having had the four break points earlier in the set and the four set points, and then losing six in a row to lose a tie break. Fritz is working hard in the team zone on the, uh, on the second screen. Trying to figure out what went wrong. It's a, a great absorption of pace by OJ Ali Asim. Is there anything better? There, I'm sure there are a few things, but being Taylor Fritz right now and having that ability to just play freely in this game, this is the 
opportunity game. No pressure on Fritz here to close at this point. There will be after the changeover if uh, that's where this is going. But I used to love these moments. Just swing away and let it fly. Fourteen, fifteen. Nice. Very nice. Very needed. Team United States with my fat game. Team Canada close to uh, losing this tie against Team USA already 1 0 up, but uh, Ojale seem giving himself a final chance. been pretty rapid as we see these slow motion pitches between these two it has flown by two hours 25 minutes already that these two have uh, gone at it against each other for the very first time in their careers much to enjoy much to savor These two from another gen, of course, we've had the conversations for the last decade or so about the, the next gen, who always had the suggestion of greatness about them. There are a couple of players that are, are being auditioned for the next role of being the next best thing in men's tennis. Medvedev has certainly stepped up in recent times, but this generation will be looking to make an impact as well. Taylor Fritz serving for the win for Team USA at this year's ATP Cup. Sometimes you feel Felix is in the perfection business, not just the winning business. He was a winner already today, 36 year old American. Yeah, good, good uh, start to the season for John yeah, Isner and a, a great start to this game for Taylor Fritz. There, there's, we've seen uh, this reaction, overreaction from Oji Aliassim as he nearly lost his way and his balance there. He misses the first serve return going for too much and then he, and he the, on the first point, then in the next point, he overcompensates and is too conservative. And it costs him. And Fritz is on the brink of Closing oh, out Tina. this tie for Team USA. Let me Hold the pose. 
Rose, cue the applause as Taylor Fritz seals the win for Team USA over Team Canada. He is going to be absolutely elated. Disappointment on the other side of the court for sure for Felix auger Asim, who added an awful lot to this contest. A terrific fight back from the Canadian in the opening set, saving the four break points in the tiebreaker. But Taylor Fritz, a very worthy winner in the end. It was a really good mental performance, wasn't it, from Taylor Fritz? A lot of players might have been sh uh, shaken up, having led a tiebreak 6-2 and then dropping six consecutive points. It's a hug from his uh, girlfriend and gets the satisfaction of closing out the match for Team USA. And I love the attitude. I love the energy on the Team USA in the zone. In their zone, lots of chatter, uh, lots of strategizing between their captain, Mike Russell, and Taylor Fritz. Good energy and a good outcome. There's still more to play for. There will be a doubles match. It won't change the winner of today's tie, but it certainly could change rankings and bank accounts. Players will be looking to get on the good foot in doubles, too. And the Felix, also serving as the captain, is now having a chat about who will play doubles for his team. Meanwhile, we have John Fitzgerald, and he's going to have a chat with the winner today. Fitzy? Taylor, thanks for talking to us. Well done. Um, good start to the season. That, that level was pretty high. Sorry? That level was very high. Yeah, you know, I played I played well the whole time. I felt like uh, I finished last year playing my best, and I had a really good offseason. I've been playing great tennis. So, uh, yeah, I played well today and uh, let the played well in the first and let it slip away from me, but kind of just kept the level up and was able to uh, close out the uh, next two. Yeah, look, um, in the second set there, you, you, you were given a, a nice friendly game by Felix at one stage. It seemed to get you right back into the match and make up for that loss of the first set. But, but your level to the end was extremely good. And you look like you're starting to want to come forward more, I think, Taylor, in your game. Yeah, you know, um, I've, been, I've been working on coming forward for a while now. But uh, the biggest kind of change in my game over the past couple months is my forehand's become... Uh, a much bigger weapon and it's created a lot more opportunities for me to to kind of get the net, uh, get to net behind it because I've been uh, hurting people a lot more from the back. Yeah, and, and your defensive game is improving as well. Your, your whole package seems like to me it's coming together. You, it takes a while to learn this sport, doesn't it? Especially when you're a tall athlete. Yeah, uh, it definitely takes a while on tour to kind of figure out uh, your style and how you want to how you want to win matches and for it to all kind of come together, but it's uh, it's been coming together, and I feel like my level's gotten um, a lot better recently, so I'm excited for this year. Well, there's a lot to look forward to, mate. There's a lot of potential here. You haven't fulfilled it yet, and it's on the way. Great to see John play so well, John, isn't it, this morning? You guys must be feeling good about yourself now. You've got a strong team. Yeah, uh, we're, feeling, we're feeling really good today. Um, obviously, I think, you know, when we played in 2020, we, uh, we didn't win a match, so first, uh, first win for Team USA at the uh, ATP Cup, so. Feels good. And I'm hoping Rajiv Ram can come back and help you guys, but uh, that'll make a difference. Are you going to play some doubles otherwise this week? Yeah, it looks like, uh, looks like I'll be firing it up for some doubles in the meantime, but hopefully Raj can come back soon. Obviously, he's, uh, he's a big asset to our, our team in the doubles. Thanks, Taylor. Thanks for talking to us. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, Rajiv certainly is out at the moment with COVID till Thursday, but uh, he's got a couple of teammates here that have done the job for him in... Uh, Different styles. John Isner was uh, truly magnificent. One-sided contest. This was very evenly matched, but we just watched the wishful thinking of Alchemy. He turned a negative in that opening set, having lost it when he should have won it, into something that was a stirring victory in the end for him, Jim. Yeah, it's a tremendous start to the season. Uh, first meeting between these two players. It won't be the last. Looking forward already to their next encounter to see how it shakes out. But high-level tennis, high-intensity tennis from both players and Taylor talking uh, very clearly about the improvements he's made that uh, extra speed he's putting on a forehand the dividends that is uh, bringing to his ledger and off to a terrific start here in his season Team USA will be back out for some doubles against Team Canada but a, a great start for sure for 2022 for Taylor Fritz and we'll look forward to seeing more of him, whether it's in doubles coming up or in singles in a couple of days' time.